Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. My final guest this morning has been the pitch coach on Dragon's Den for the last seven series and she joins me now to discuss the do's and don'ts when pitching your business. Catherine, as I mentioned, you assist the contestants on Dragon's Den with their pitches and you've also written a book entitled The Pitch Coach. But where did your specialism in communication and pitch training stem from? Well, Carl, my primary degree in college was French and German, interpreting and translating. Uh, When I left college first, I worked with Aer Lingus as cabin crew. Uh, Then I moved on and was a manager with Compact Computers, as well as a French and German secondary school teacher. So I combined my management and teaching experience with something else I also had that I would now probably call a unique selling point. I had a speech and drama teaching diploma. So that was something that I felt I could add to my training in communication and presentation skills. So I set up my own business back in 2002. I called it Communication Matters and I sent out 60 letters and I only received one response. That was from the Bank of Scotland, Ireland. They brought me in for a couple of meetings and I tailored a course specifically for them over a period of about eight weeks. And that was my very first training in communication and presentation skills. And as you well know, Carl, all you need is one good recommendation or testimonial. And I've been working in the area of communication and presentation skills since then. And how did the opportunity come along for you to work with Dragons then? Well, I suppose I created that opportunity myself, Carl. I had just completed a master's degree in journalism in Dublin City University back in 2008. And I was continuing with my own training. And I read a piece in the business post that the production company Shinawil was bringing the Irish version of Dragon's Den to RTE. And my immediate thought was, oh my goodness, Irish people are really going to struggle with this two minute pitch. I had worked with a lot of corporates up to then and I could see you know, how complicated people make a pitch particularly startups and the fear around public speaking. So I contacted the program directly and asked if I could work with the contestants as a presentation coach or pitch coach. Initially, they said, no, we don't need you. This is a franchise. It's in 18 different countries. There is no pitch coach on the list in terms of a production team. And I said, look, I'll leave it with you. Have a think about it. And, you know, maybe come back to me. And they did. They came back to me about a week or two before they started filming and asked me to come in and have a chat. We agreed to trial it for year one and I've been working with them every year since. What are the main challenges that contestants have when they go in to pitch their business? As I just mentioned there, there's a certain element of fear or anxiety around public speaking. A lot of people tend to overcomplicate their pitch. They over-intellectualise it, where really it's just a story. A lot of people come in to me and they've learned their pitch off by heart. They may have spent weeks and indeed sleepless nights thinking about the pitch, going over and over it and putting extra pressure on themselves to have to say it a particular way. I might meet them on the day, maybe about an hour beforehand, and I'd say, that's great, lovely to meet you. Now just have a run through your pitch. And they can't even remember their name. Nothing comes out. They just draw a complete blank. And I believe that's because of all of the anxiety around it that they've built up within themselves, but also that mistake of learning it off by heart. Whereas in actual fact, a pitch is nothing more than a story. And particularly for startups, it's their unique story. And they need to make it as simple as possible so that everybody in the audience understands it. And if they make it simple and if they make it interesting and engaging for the audience, they've made it memorable. And I think that's where I come in and I end up trying to break down their pitch that they've learned into a story. And I end up just sitting and having a cup of tea with the chat with them and breaking their pitch down into five keywords that will help them to remember in the sequence that makes sense for them. And if they go in and if they have a keyword on each finger and thumb of of their hand going into the dragon's den, they remember it in terms of a story. And as you and I know, you can tell the same story 10 times, 10 different ways to 10 different people. It doesn't have to be said the exact same way each time, but more than likely the beginning will be the same, the middle, the end, and the, the impact of that story. So it's just about really getting better at telling their story. So is there a particular structure to the pitch that you recommend? I did some research myself a few years ago. I wrote a piece for the Sunday Independent on what venture capitalists or investors are looking for in a pitch. And I interviewed people from Ireland, from the UK, 
the Silicon Valley in Dubai. And the common denominator seemed to be five key elements. And that was the problem, solution, market, team and financials. So there are certainly five keywords I could suggest for people for a pitch. However, they may not necessarily fall into you know, their remit as to where they are within their business. But ultimately, it generally starts with a problem. You know, what's the problem you encountered around your particular area or the product that you're, you've come up with? Generally, you have come up with a light bulb moment because something isn't on the market. You went looking for it and you realized it wasn't there. So what was that problem? What's your unique solution to that problem? If there's anything else out there on the market like that at the moment, and as I said, if not, you know, why are you different or better than anything else out there? And that leads you into the market, the size of the market, the target market, your particular route to market. Then ultimately people are investing in you, but also in the team. So even if you're just an individual starting up, just to have a vision of the team that you will hire in the future, perhaps it might be somebody in digital marketing, in IT, in finance. Ultimately, we can't always do it ourselves. So just to give an insight into a team that you're going to build and then finally the financials and that might be in terms of customers to date turnover to date and projected turnover and if it's investment you're looking for including that in the ask what it is that you're looking for and what it is that you're willing to give and is it possible to adopt a one-size-fits-all approach to pitching or is the success of the pitch determined by an individual's ability to tailor the pitch to their audience I think you've just hit the nail on the head there, Carl. The starting point of any pitch is the audience. Who are you pitching to? So an investor pitch will be a completely different pitch to a customer or a client, a supplier, a business partner. They will all be different because the audience, the the person you're actually pitching to is different. So you have to, at the very start, stand back and say, who am I pitching to? What's in it for them? Why should they care? How are they going to benefit? So it's pairing back a little bit on what you want to say and giving more of what they need to hear. And then finally, that emotional connection. They tell us, the psychologists have been telling us for years that a person's psyche is made up of 10% logic and 90% emotion. So we really need to try and connect with the audience on an emotional level, on a human level, making it real and tangible to them and perhaps bringing in little stories, anecdotes, examples, case studies, something that's going to bring this to life. Now, if you've just tuned in, I'm speaking to the pitch coach, Catherine Moonan. So, Catherine, let's look at some of the specific scenarios where people are required to pitch themselves or their business. Let's start with the individual that is presenting for an interview. Yeah. How can they sell themselves so that they can land that job? Well, again, it's it's down to preparation. There's a great line, actually, Wayne Murphy, who gave me an interview for the pitch. Wayne gave me this line, preparation is the price paid for superiority. And I think that really comes into play, particularly when it's, a, it's about an interview situation. So you're looking at the job spec you know, in, in great detail, the job description, the role and responsibilities of the person that they're looking for. And basically, you're tailoring your answers to that job description and the role and responsibilities. So really having a look at it, highlighting the keywords and ensuring that in the answers that you give, that you're including those keywords in it. So I think in terms of preparation, there are certainly two questions anyway that I suggest to people that you're nearly guaranteed that they'll come up. And I think one of those is tell me about your career to date. And that is obviously starting with when you've left school to where you are now and giving an answer of about 60 seconds and practicing that out loud beforehand. And then I think the other one is, why are you the best person for the job? And again, bringing in those keywords that they have included in the job spec or the description and the role and responsibilities of the person they're looking for and tailoring your answers to what it is that they're looking for. If you imagine them with a you know, clipboard and it's almost like a tick box exercise, they have a list of what they're looking for and you need to match that list. And then ultimately you've got you know, so many other types of questions that you can prepare beforehand and certainly have a think about as in you know, where do you want to be in five years' time or you know, tell me about your strengths or you know, do you have any weaknesses? Those type of questions, you know, th- there's no guarantee they'll come up but certainly have a think about it. And then finally I would suggest a lot of interviews nowadays are based on competencies. So the interviewer is looking for examples of how you have behaved in the past in order to give them an idea about how you will behave in the future. 
So if on the job description they're looking for somebody with, you know, team being me- member of part of a team or team leadership or maybe problem solving or decision making, for example, you know, have your examples ready of when you made difficult decisions in the past or when you were a member of a team and you made a difference to that team or some leadership experience. And for anybody out there who you may not have a lot of career experience to date, even to bring in examples of team involvement in a sport, for example, or in some other sort of you know, hobby that they have, they might be able to bring in some examples. So don't always feel that it has to be limited to the work environment if they don't have a huge amount of experience to date. Now, it's often been said that people fear public speaking more than debt itself. But are there techniques which can be used to turn public speaking into an enjoyable experience? You know, I, I think so. And I often see people who are very, very nervous. And I imagine, I think they feel that there's a spotlight on them. However, mentally, they need to shift that spotlight into a floodlight onto the audience. It's actually not about them. When you're standing up and speaking in front of a group of people, it's totally and utterly about the audience and what you want that audience to do, think or feel as a result of the message you're communicating. So it's almost a a little bit selfish of us to feel nervous beforehand. But there are some techniques, really, that I could suggest. And one is a mindful breathing meditation. Even if you were to do that for 30 seconds, it certainly helps to ground you before you go into a stressful situation like public speaking you know, at an event or indeed an interview or waiting to stand up or go out and pitch in front of an investor. Another technique might be um, positive affirmation. That's literally making up one or two sentences. You know, I deliver a brilliant presentation or this interview is going to go so well. You know, I, I nail it. I get the job or I get the investment. Whatever it is, make up one or two sentences and repeat it over and over. And it helps just to push out any negative thought beforehand. And then finally, another technique would be a visualisation technique that I came across in an interview I did a few years ago with an actor, Giles Torreira was his name, he was a British actor, and he spoke about his own performance anxiety before he went on stage every evening, and a technique he used was to go out on stage about an hour beforehand, visualise a full house, everyone sitting in their seats, standing at the back, standing up the aisles, and visualising telling a joke, going step by step through that joke till he got to the punchline, visualised everyone bursting into laughter, and went back off stage and then came back on within the hour in his costume. And he had to do that every single night before a performance. And I had seen his performance the previous evening, not knowing about this technique or indeed about his anxiety. And he he certainly fooled everybody in the audience. You know, when I was there, you would never think for a moment that he suffered from any sort of performance anxiety or fear of public speaking. So I believe it's about finding a technique that works for you. Nerves is nervous energy. You want to have an energetic performance. If you're not nervous, it means you might come across very dull and boring and lethargic. And that has a ripple effect on the audience too. So if you just say, you know what, it's just about finding a technique, having something in reserve. So that's, you know, in terms of suggesting, I would say put yourself out there, put yourself out of your comfort zone. The more often you speak in public, the better it becomes. And practice makes better. I don't believe there's any such thing as perfect, but certainly practice makes better. That's certainly great advice, Catherine. Now, with the economy recovering, we're going to see an increase in the amount of startup businesses coming on stream in the months and years ahead. Yeah. Uh, most of those startup entrepreneurs will have no experience of going in and meeting with government agencies like the local enterprise office yeah. and Enterprise Ireland. Talk yeah. to me about the advice that you would give to such an entrepreneur that is going into and engaging with a government agency for the first time or looking to maybe earn themselves a place on an accelerator programme. That's it. And again, it's about researching the audience. And if you're pitching to the likes of Enterprise Ireland or indeed any of the new frontiers programmes that I work with and a lot, a lot of the Institutes of Technology around Ireland, you know, Enterprise Ireland have three things in mind in terms of long-term or, or large investment. And that is they want to see growth and they want to see that the, you'll have a high turnover. They're actually looking for you predicting a turnover of 1 million euro by the end of year three. They want to see that you're predicting that you will have hired 10 people by the end of year three. And Enterprise Ireland are also interested in the possibility of export. So just to bear in mind that in your pitch, 
they need to be boxes that you're ticking for Enterprise Ireland or the likes of, of New Frontiers and a lot of the startup and accelerator programs around Ireland. Now it may or may not fit initially but certainly just to bear that in mind that you're playing you know, to the audience so asking yourself what do they want to hear, what do they need to hear A in order to give me a place on this programme or B in order to give me investment. Now negotiation is one of the most important skills that you can have in any business. Now once the pitch has been delivered, let's say on the Dragons then, the investor is interested but is seeking to negotiate a higher equity stake. How can we handle this type of situation without putting the deal in jeopardy? Well, I find that most people have a figure in their mind before they go in in terms of a max that they will give away. So they might go in looking for, say, for example, €50,000 for 10%, but they know that they're willing to maybe give away a max of 20%. A lot of the contestants, they're there on their own and they're given maybe a few seconds then afterwards to think about it. But it is, I suppose, it's about sticking with your, you know, your own gut feeling and your true self and what you had intended and decided on giving before you even go in and sticking with that. And I think you get that element of respect if you do that. And there were a few cases this year on Dragon's Den. I think homeschool.ie was one of them. I don't know whether you watched the programme or not. I did indeed. But, you know, where the gentleman wasn't going to give any more. In actual fact, I think it was 10% he was looking for and he didn't, wasn't willing to give any sort of leeway uh, from that particular 10%. But it is about being true to yourself and, and sticking with what you had intended going in in the first place. The worst thing you want to do is come out feeling you've given away half of your business if that wasn't the intention. But certainly reading the situation, listening to what's being asked, it is very much thinking on the spot and saying, look, is 45% of something better than, you know, whatever, 100% of nothing if you want to end up walking away and not giving away anything away. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.